Today we're learning about high and low treble clap, which is going to be for your ra ha, and bass clap, which is for your la ha. Now, before we get into these two pages, pages 52 and 53 in your first piano adventure book, we're going to take just a moment to see what this looks like on the piano. I have lined my book up so that it's even with middle C, and I did that for a reason. Middle C lives in the treble clef, and it also lives in the bass clef. Middle C and every note higher than that are all part of the treble clef. Middle C and every note lower than that are all part of the bass clef. Take a moment to play your own treble clef notes, either in a glissando, the way I did, or one at a time, and then play your bass clef notes either in a glissando or one at a time like that. Now that we've seen where treble clef and bass clef live on the piano, let's get to know them a little bit more individually. Bass clef is in charge of low sounds. So let's say bass clef in our lowest voice. Bass clef. Very good. For bass clef, let's look at each one of these individual pictures and decide, is it low or is it high? This guy looks like uh, an abominable monster to me. I imagine if he was to say hello to me, it would sound something like, hello, Sarah. That's pretty low, right? I don't think he'd be like, hello, Sarah. <laughs> so let's circle him because he has a low voice. Now that hello, Sarah, is kind of exactly what I would expect out of, of this little creature right here. So let's move on to the dinosaur, who I think might also have a low voice. Now, you know what's true? We're making guesses. We can't hear any of these voices. We're just making our best guess. You know, this could be a baby with a low voice, but I'm going to guess not. I'm also going to guess that this fly is a pretty high voice, but this wolf looks like he might have a real... Hello, and hello. Here is Missy and Mouse, who you know now. I'm betting that's a higher voice, but this elephant. Yeah. And now we'll get to know treble clef, the high one. So please say treble clef in a high voice. Treble clef. And now let's do the same investigation we did for the bass clef. Let's look at these pictures. First we have a little bluebird. I'm betting she would not be like, hello. I'm betting she's got more of a hello. So we're going to circle. That is if she could talk. And we have a tiger. I'm betting he's more of a low voice guy. Now, honestly, with people, we never, ever know. But if it's a kiddo, we can make a pretty good guess that it's a pretty high voice. Over here, we have a worm. Also a high voice. I skipped this guy. I'm betting he has a low one though. I'm betting this horse also has a low voice. And honestly, we know Monster Bus Driver has a low voice, but this little kitty right here, she might have kind of a high meow. Once you've learned treble clef and bass clef in the lesson book, come on over to the writing book, pages 36 and 37. This is where the real fun begins. This is really a composition exercise and it's a good one. I love doing this one with students. So we're gonna look at each picture and here are the three things that we're looking for. Forte or piano, high or low, now we now know that's treble clef or bass clef, and then short or long. So let's make some decisions and then let's do some playing. I'm just going to get you started with this page and then this page will be left for you to explore with your parent or with a teacher or on your own if that feels good. You know next to high and low if we want to we can give ourselves a little just do your best a little treble clef and a little bass clef. So we know that's what that's talking about. That's what we're looking for. And let's start with baby birds in a tree. Now, we just circled that a baby bird probably has a high voice. I'm going to bring that into this, too. Now, uh, my guess, and honestly, it's different if the baby birds are really hungry. But overall, in my life, birds have been rather soft. That might be different for you. But for me, I'm going to put a piano there, a P, 
super soft. And then baby birds in a tree, you know, it's kind of short, isn't it? A little short sound. So I'm going to put short. And now I'm going to come up to some high keys, maybe around here, and I'm going to play short, soft, high sound. <laughs> Maybe there's four birds. They each have something to say. They each want their own worm. You can experiment with your sound for as long as you want to and then move on to the next one. Booming thunder. I grew up in Texas where there was tons of booming thunder and I happen to know it is low. It is a bass club sound. I also know it is forte. And it tends to honestly be both short and long. There's like a clap and then a roll sometimes. So we could kind of work with both of those. For thunder, pedal is nice to add in too. And you can create big sounds. Now there's the clap and then there's the roll. Big thunder, you can use both hands if you want to. Maybe just one big roll. The squirrels can really go in a lot of different directions. Uh, high or low, soft or loud, short or long. There's been a lot of confusion about the squirrels over the years and honestly, I don't know what the answer is. So today I'm gonna say they're high and soft and making short sounds. And if we experiment with that, high, soft and short, That's kind of fun. Maybe there's two at a time bouncing together. Enjoy the rest of the treble clef and bass clef page. Raindrops lightly falling, fire truck honks, tooth fairy flitting around your room, and elephants stomping. Think for each one. Is it high or low? Is it soft or loud? Is it short or long? And then work to create those sounds. It's a wonderful start, not just for piano playing, but for composition as well.